I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired, and this is a well-worn baseball cap I borrowed from its owner because, in a sense, it is a symbol. In fact, the men involved in the true story we will document for you would probably have preferred going into combat without ammunition and without this cap. In August 1943, the USS Grayling was concluding her fifth Pacific patrol. Her skipper was Lieutenant Commander John E. Lee of Rancho Santa Fe, California, a veteran of 14 consecutive months of combat duty. Lieutenant Robert Bonin was executive officer. And Lieutenant Junior Grade Edward Camel, gunnery officer. Radium and second class John C. Smith was radar operator. And Chief Torpedoman Joseph Day was chief of the boat. The Grayling was down to her last torpedo and had been waiting for just the kind of target she now had in her sights. Stand by forward. Stand by number one. Final observation and shoot. Bearing mark. 305. Range. Mark. 2500. Set. Shoot. Down scope. Fire one. Hold it, top scope. This is what I'm going to watch. So far, so good. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Take a look, Bob. She's slipping out of sight fast, Captain. Kind of screw her midships. Oh, boy, what a beautiful shot. The crew's been talking for days about making this last one count. Sort of a going away present for you. Well, they couldn't have given me a better one. Down, Scott. Well, let's say we head for home. <laughs> There was a customary welcome awaiting the Grayling when she returned to base at Fremantle, Australia. But it was a special moment for Commander Lee. Not only had this last patrol been highly successful, but within the hour he'd be getting his leave papers from Admiral Christie. Then a boat for home. What is it, Johnston? Commander Lee is here, sir. Oh, send him in. Hello, Jack. Good morning, sir. Well, welcome home. It's wonderful to have you back. Thank you, sir. It's good to be back. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't get down to the dock to be a part of the welcoming committee. That's all right. I got your message. Ah, uh, staff meetings every time I turn around. Oh, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Well, I've, I've read your patrol report. I know you have been sitting on your thumbs for the past 60 days. Well, we had a little luck and a good hot area. Well, I've got another one just as hot for your next patrol. Next patrol, sir? There he's beating around the bush, Jack. My leave's been canceled. I'm sorry, Jack. But you see, enemy shipping has tripled in the last three months. Experienced skippers and crews are a must. Well, I understand. What about the men, sir? Does this affect the 25% quota replacement? It affects all personnel. Now, Jack, we have the manpower. They're all green kids. I just can't take a chance in sending them out. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Johnson? Admiral Rich is in the conference room, sir. Well, tell him I'll be right in. Well, another staff meeting. I'll be going, sir. Now, uh, we can talk about this later, Jack. What about some tennis this afternoon? Fine. Four o'clock as usual? Four o'clock. It's really good to see you back. Thank you, sir. See you at four. Goodbye, Jack. It took only three weeks to refit the Grayling, and on October 1st, 1943, she started on her sixth combat patrol. Well, the men didn't take the leave casting as hard as I thought they would? Oh, well, you know why, don't you? No, oh, why? Well, you got a loyal bunch here. I think the men will parade the Grayling colors down the main street of Tokyo, if you ask them. Well, the best piece of luck I've had is to get a crew like this. As long as we're underway, I think I'll cut them in on some of our orders. Captain speaking. 
Our orders are to proceed to the coast of Borneo for a five-day patrol of enemy shipping lanes. Then proceed to the Philippines. Lie in wait off Corregidor for anything going in or out of Manila Bay. I needn't tell you this will be no Sunday picnic. Good luck. En route to their destination, every mile of the ocean was considered enemy water. Three days out of Fremantle, on October 4th, 1943, the routine of shipboard life settled down on the grayling, and the traditional playoff for the patrol checker championship started. Any words, Rick? They're just starting the summer finals. What's the first game? Uh, Skipper's playing Beaver Rankin. Hey, that should be pretty good. They've each held the championship once. Hey, my money's on Chief Day. <laughs> Okay, Rankin, your move. Hold it. <laughs> Captain to the conning tower. Captain to the conning tower. Remember, it's my move. Radar contact in about 10,000 yards, Captain, bearing 350, closing in. Take her down, Bob. Clear the bridge. Dive! Dive! <laughs> Contact, sir, bearing 350. Okay, stay with it. Up scope. Can't see anything but weather. And none of it good. Yeah. Oh, pea soup. Uh-huh. Anything more? Nothing more than a guess, sir. I'd say it's twin screws, maybe a tanker. Closing in fast, though. This might be a good chance, Captain, to see how good or bad radar is. Not on your life. They send us out with a full load of fish, then we can experiment. Besides, we'd have to surface, you know what this fog is like. We might run right out in the open. Here, let me take it. What have you got against radar, Captain? Oh, nothing really. Can't say much for it either. Except when I perfect it. Can't see a thing. No, hold it, wait a minute. We're out in the open, just barely make him out. If he doesn't start zigging, we got ourselves a sitting duck. We'll have to work fast. It's too hazy to make him out there. Yeah, we're gonna get one crack at him before that fog closes in again. Come on, let's go. Angle on the bow, 60 starboard. Final observation, and shoot. Bearing mark, 352. Range mark, 1500. Set. Shoot. Fire one. Number one's a clean miss. Fifty yards forward of the bow. Number two. Direct hit. Is she sinking? I can't tell yet. Just spreading the fog. You mean we won't get credit for a sinking? It doesn't look that way. Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Let's take her up, Bob, and try out that radar of yours, huh? That's it. Now you've got it. Looks to me as if he's got a double image in the screen. Double image? Nothing. Caught her right amidships. <laughs> She's breaking in two. That's the second half, you see. Got the contact, sir. 5,000 yards. Closing in fast. Must be the escort. Aerial contact, Captain. Planes overhead at 270. Clear the bridge. Dive, dive! Did you make them out yet? Yeah, bombers. Four, maybe more. Service contact closing in fast, Captain. Well, they've got us coming and going. Shall we work for silent running, Captain? No, I want that destroyer to find us. As long as we can keep a surface vessel on our tail, we've got a perfect umbrella. 
Those bombers won't dare drop anything for fear of hitting their own ship. Of course, the trick is to stay clear of the destroyer's depth charges. Captain Lee's strategy worked. Using the enemy destroyer as an umbrella, the attacking bombers were unable to drop their bombs. Their fuel low, they finally left the area. Captain Lee then rigged for solid running and lost the surface vessel. The batteries charged, the Grayling was on her way at dawn the next day, and again the crew settled down to the routine of shipboard life. Now hear this. The game for the Grayling Six Patrol Checker Championship is scheduled for 1400. Captain Lee versus Chief of the Boat, Joe Day. All right, gentlemen, no money showing, your marker's good. There is no gambling in the United States Navy, just a friendly vote of confidence and your choice. All markers redeemed or collected before your first liberty. So step right up, your credit's good with good old Honest John. Now, who else for day? Who else for the champion, huh? Ah, here we got him. And please, gentlemen, let the man through, let the man through. And your name, sir, is... You ready, Captain? The challenger is first move. Well. Okay, I'm ready, Day, if you are. The skipper's move. Day just took his black king. My money's on Day this time. I'll stick with the skipper. Well, he beat Herbie Herwaski, and then Herbie was champ before Day. Hey, the skipper just took Dave Air King and... Bearing zero, one zero, elevation 20. Play the bridge! Dude, did you arrange this, Lieutenant, after all your money is on Dave? Keep going. Dive, dive! <laughs> of the bomber's attack was October 14th. It was important to the Grayling, not only because it was a near-fatal encounter, but it marked the beginning of the most furious combat action the Grayling was ever to see. as Captain Lee had told his men, no Sunday picnic as the submarine fought her way to her assigned destination, the Philippines. Arriving off Corregidor on October 21st, but I think it moved. Morning, Captain. Morning, Ed. What's it look like? I can't make it out, Captain. We're gonna have to get out of sight pretty soon. Take her down, Bob. Yes, sir. All right, clear the bridge!
Sorry, Captain. I, I just didn't see you. Forget it, Ed. It was my fault. But if the Navy ever has a contest for the running broad jump into a hatch, I'll highly recommend you. Now, let's get rid of our last two pickles and go home, huh? Yeah. Beats me. Take a look, Bob. Looks like inter island transport, probably a supply ship. Been sitting there for two hours. I'll send somebody down for it. Well, yeah, never mind. I probably left it on the bridge. She's either crippled and dropped out of a convoy or she's waiting for an escort. Let's take her and go home. Upstroke. Zero three zero. Range. Mark. Two five double oh. Down scope. I don't know. I've seen sitting ducks before, but this sure takes the cake. Up scope. Take it, Bob. Tubes ready? Tubes ready, sir. Depth set at 18 feet. Very well. Looks like a clean shot to me. Stand by. Final range and shoot. Range, mark, 2,000 yards. Set, shoot. Fire one. Fire two. How much time to target? 20 seconds for number one, Captain. Captain, the target just started turning his propellers. Oh, boy. How about that? It's a Q ship, and she's stepping for action. Well, we sure walked into this one. Down scope. All ahead, full. Left full rudder. All ahead, full. Left full rudder. Take her down 180 feet. Aye, aye, 180 feet. Reef for depth charge, reef for silent running. Any change, Tom? No change, sir. Stay with it. He's passing overhead, Captain. compartments. Where is he, Sam? Turning. Heading this way again, Captain. Right full rudder. All ahead full. All compartments report no damage, Captain. Propeller's speeding up. He's starting a run. He's right on us, sir. He dropped the first one. There's two. Three. Here we come. Can't shake him off a tail. Dave. One of the men passed your 
headquarters and saw this hanging there, sir. I think we'd all feel a lot better if you wore it. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Underwater object approaching, sir. What? But well, whatever it is, it's moving directly toward us. Sure it couldn't be something coming from the surface ship? No, sir. Surface ship's have another bearing. You think they've got a new tracking device? Could be. Anything's possible. You think it's a one-man sub? No, sir. No sound of screws. Any change in bearing? No, sir. No change. It's coming directly toward us. Stand by to sound collision alarm. Wait a minute, sir. Stop. Hold it, Bob. I th yes, sir. Holding steady. You know, it may sound crazy, Captain, but could it be a man-propelled torpedo, sort of a suicide depth charge? Crazier things than that have happened. Why would he stop? Maybe to take a new bearing. Objects moving again, sir. Coming toward us. Surface craft starting to run too, sir. Whatever that is in the water is moving directly over us. They're into port now. Well, that doesn't... Sir? Well, what is this, sir? The surface craft's veering off to port too. Following the underwater object? Yes, sir. They're both on the same course. Of course. It's what I think it is, gentlemen. We've just become the first submarine in naval history to be saved by the curiosity of a whale. We'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now I'd like you to meet the real life skipper of tonight's story, Rear Admiral John E. Lee, retired, now resident of Rancho Santa Fe, California. Since you're here in person, Jack, I'd like to return the lucky baseball cap we borrowed. Thank you, Tommy. Beat up as it is, is one of my prized possessions. I can understand that. The men aboard the Grayling had a lot of faith in its lucky properties, didn't they? So much so, in fact, that someone always brought it to me if we were going into action and I'd forgotten it. You left the Grayling after that six patrol, didn't you, Jack? Yes, I was relieved of command and replacements were made for 25% of the crew. Unfortunately, the six was the last patrol the Grayling made. On Earth 7, she disappeared and all hands were lost. That was certainly a great loss to the submarine force. It was not only a great loss to our submarine force, but it was a great personal loss to me. As you know from experience, Tommy, there's a rare comradeship that exists between the skipper and his crew, and the Grayling crew was one of the finest I ever came in contact with. One more question, Jack. Do you recall how you felt when you were left on the bridge when the Grayling submerged? I was so busy reaching for anything higher than I was that I didn't do much thinking. At one point, I remember, I caught sight of land and I wished I'd had more sleep it looked like a long swim. We all join your lovely wife, Gwen, in being very glad you didn't have to try it. Thanks, Jack, for being with us. Thank you, Tommy. For extraordinary heroism, Rear Admiral Lee was awarded the Navy Cross. Be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting story of the silent service. <laughs>